Hello, good afternoon. My name is Dan Blake. I am a professional voiceover actor and broadcaster for Worldwide FM. Um, my journey started with the SRAs many moons ago in 2011, um, where I went to the student radio conference, I do believe, um, which was a three day event with the SRAs, which they do every year. I bought a ticket of Rianne Boland um, from Smoke Radio. It was our radio station at the University of Westminster, which I joined to broadcast my weekly show. Um, she wasn't going anymore, so I decided to buy her ticket off her. Um, so I went for the first time to the student radio conference. Um, got there, really enjoyed it. This was in Hertfordshire at the time. Um, I remember being there. And there was a, a competition called the student, the voice of the student radio conference. You get the chance to be the special voice that announce, announces um, some of um, what was going on at the time. And um, yeah, I entered the competition. Um, I think, you know, the competition was to be the voice of the student radio awards. Yes, my bad. Um, so I entered this competition, um, just egged on by friends. Um, who thought I had maybe a good voice that could do well in this kind of format and when I was doing that I entered I became top 10 um, got into the final finals become a finalist and I was just shocked I couldn't believe it because I actually left the conference after the first day and I came back the second day um, after going to do some studio work and I was announced I was in I was a finalist um, didn't actually go on to win it but it was a good opportunity and I got some exposure people started to hear my voice from that competition and my name was kind of buzzing around that student radio event in Hertfordshire. So I was really chuffed by the opportunity. And the SRAs was an organisation where I was like, all right, this is a great place to try and network and broaden my horizons. You know, I've never been to a conference with so much people from, you know, student radio from all over the country and also um, BBC, Capital Extra, all of these big radio stations around as well. So it was definitely a great curve for me. Met some great voiceover agencies out there like Wise Buddha and stuff like that. Um, it was a really great opportunity. Then later on that year, I believe I went, I remember going to, to the SRAs and um, I was doing some some voiceover work at university. And from that SRA um, student conference opportunity, I remember getting an opportunity to be a part of um, a smoke radio. I think it was the University of Westminster. We was doing a piece for one of the nominations um, um, and I done a piece called Hello I'm Half Cast which is a documentary where some of my voiceovers was used to um, be a part of this BBC4 documentary and then it was included as a nomination for Rianne Boland who went on to win um, uh, I think it was documentary of the year or something at SRAs and that was my first kind of grasp of getting an opportunity to hear my voice like really out there in a voiceover format um, on a big screen, I think, you know, at SRA Awards, it was crazy. I think it was at O2 at the time, the SRAs. But yeah, it was insane just seeing that for the first time. Then I remember coming back to the student radio conference for a second year. And um, at that time, I was really trying to go for, I mean, really trying to boost my radio career. I think it was my last year of university, um, last year of uni. And, um, yeah, it was really going off. I was at, I was at opportunity. Um, so I was getting my voice out there. Then I, I returned the following year. Um, so I was really now really in part, a part of this SRA student radio experience. So I was really egging myself and encouraging myself saying, this is my opportunity to really progress. So the next year, you know, I returned, I was on the panels. I think it was in Bradford at the time. Bradford, yeah, I remember things in Bradford. Um, so, watched some BBC panels. Um, I remember at the time, Reese Hughes and Matt Fisher was on a panel from BBC Sounds, and Reese Hughes also um, former commissioner at the BBC, BBC former former controller, sorry, at the BBC, and um, he was on the panel at the time, and I was just watching them in conversation, you know, taking in the knowledge. Then after they came off the panel. I approached them both with a CD of mine, which had my music on it, funny enough, because as I said, I was still pursuing music at the time, as well as my broadcasting. So I walked up to Matt Fisher with his CD and I was like, hey man, 
Um, um, listen to my CD, man. If you like the music, possibly play this on the radio station, which would have been one extra radio one. So he took my CD away, kind of half a case, um, took it away, got a call back after the conference, probably about two, three weeks later. Um, saying, I would really like your voice. Don't really like your song too much, but I really like that voice. They didn't actually say they would like the song, but that's what I was thinking. So they said, we really like your voice. We want to bring you in to voice dubstep week. Um, so for, for I know it, I was on my way to the BBC studios for the first time. Um, got down there, was really scared, terrified. Um, to calm my nerves, I ended up sitting in on Tim Westwood's show at the time, and he had Eve as a special guest and Bun B also. And I was just chilling out, relaxing, cracking jokes with Tim Westwood. He was cussing me out on air for banter, all kind of jokes and stuff going on. But cut the long story short, that got me relaxed. So I was feeling real, real kind of chill going into my first voiceover on Dubstep Week. Um, so got that Dubstep Week one done. That went around everywhere. Um, that went on. That was when mobile phones and voiceover technology was really beginning. So you'd really, there was really a big push on catching content on your phones and stuff like that. So I remember that kind of, that content going everywhere for one week and that was my entry into the voiceover game on the BBC level. And that all started from being at um student radio event, you know. Um so if I didn't hand my C D into Matt Fisher, maybe he would never have heard my voice and my BBC career would have never have started. So the long story short is that you always gotta be brave. You know, be brave be confident, be persistent, be hungry, man. Stay hungry and stay humble. You know, it's a saying I definitely believe in just be hungry with good intentions, man. You know, you really want to get far in life. People will see this, um, see this kind of energy, you know. Me, I'm a person that I always believe, you know, push yourself to the limit, try and break barriers, you know. And that's what I've done that day, which came and led to my opportunity at the BBC. And we're in 2020, you know, voiceovers started for them in 2011 and I'm still doing campaigns with them. My last campaign was the F Corona campaign in 2020 this year and uh, sports relief. So that's nine years of voiceover work with the BBC. So if I never have handed in my CD at that student radio conference, um, maybe that would never have been a part of my story. Um, so moving on from that, from then I started doing, you know, as I was saying, so many voiceovers from the BBC years later, and I've nearly a 10 year career of voiceovers with them. And also at the SRAs, I went on to meet my, my voiceover agents, Wise Buddha, who then from hearing my work on the BBC, they then signed me to Wise Buddha. And I've been signed to Wise Buddha, which is now One Take Voices since, um, since 20, yeah, since 2013, I've been signed seven years. And in those seven years, I've done voiceovers for NBA, WWE, um, Universal Music, Sony Music, Warner Brothers, um, Barclays Bank. Um, yeah, the list goes on. Untold amount of voiceovers, um, you know, in the game, Mafia 3, basketball games, NBA. Yeah, it's been a very strong run, you know, um, and it's still going on to this day. I've been... The, the first ever continuity announcer for BET in the UK. Um, and since then I've gone on to forge even more relationships with the, you know, becoming, you know, just from networking and continuing to pursue what I'm doing in the voiceover game. I'm now also um, a BBC television announcer, you know, so now I'm doing continuity on BBC television, which was always a dream of mine when I first got into the BBC. So, I feel like my journey at the SRA's student radio, it all started just by sitting in those conferences, going to those award shows, taking it all in. I never won an SRA myself as a presenter or anything. I was doing student radio for three years, but, you know, I took it all in. Um, um, and then I went on and used areas that I liked in the game to really build myself, you know, and... That's how my whole voiceover career started. That started from being involved in student radio. And from student radio, as I've said, I've gone on to also, as well as my voiceover career, and that actually being very significant to my career, actually starting by handing in those demos. Um, I also went on to work at the BBC as a producer. Um, 
you know, I started off as a team assistant, you know, making tea and coffee for the likes of Dot, Trevor Nelson, you know, Jam Supernova. I was in, I was lucky enough to be part of some of their first shows at the BBC, um, working as a team assistant. And then later on after that, I went on to work with something else and I became an assistant producer for Daniel P. Carter on The Rock Show, which was not your, you know, I was, you know, sometimes I felt maybe, you know, I wasn't the man they thought just by looking at me sometimes I wasn't the man that they thought would be the producer doing a rock show but you know as I said for me I've got a very eclectic taste and I'm, I'm adaptable so it was nothing for me to go into a rock show and I'm a big hip-hop fan and produce that show um, also went on to produce DJ Semtec, Shawnee B, um, Handyman and Limelight so one of my proudest moments was as a producer or working behind the scenes because that was always a bucket list thing for me it's not necessarily something I wanted to do for life but it was something that I wanted to put on my bucket list I was always a presenter and an actor voiceover actor first but I always knew I wanted to learn the dynamics from behind the scenes also to include in my CV and my repertoire and so that could never be taken from me and I do believe that makes you a stronger broadcaster and a stronger all-rounder technically um, so I was very proud that I got to work on every network as a producer. So I worked on One Extra, Radio One and BBC Asian Network producing shows. Um, so that was excellent for my CV and I was very proud to have that. Um, so as I said, from moving on from behind the scenes, I've gone on to broadcast on radio stations. From student radio level, I went on to broadcast at Beat London. Um, I went on to broadcast at Pulse 88. Uh, interviewing some of the biggest artists in the world, you know, I've interviewed the likes of the Wu Tang Clan, I've been to hip hop legends, Wyclef Jean, um, someone please call 911, you know, legends are ripped for Whitney Houston. I've went on to interview Will I Am, you know, some huge mega stars for my broadcasting spells, you know, at those stations. And then I've also now gone on to Giles Peterson's award winning radio station, Worldwide FM, where I'm hosting some shows until 2021 real special shows that are going to be very close to my heart. So I continue to innovate and build my career and um, be positive about what I want to do and um, be confident, you know, as a black man, um, you know, black lives matter all day, every day. Don't ever get twisted. You know, there's a lot going on out here, but I just want my black people to speak up. You know, when you feel there's an issue, speak up, let your voice be heard, um, be accountable, you know, let your, your inclusion, you know, be felt, you know, you know, definitely speak up about issues that you feel are strong to you within the black community right now. Um, as I said, all lives matter, black lives matter all day, every day. Um, you know, but for me in life, I've always tried to, you know, stay confident, stay uplifted and stay encouraging, you know, just trying to keep pushing forward and, and not keeping a chip on my shoulder through life, you know. Um, you know, I've experienced my ups and downs, you know, being a black man, but I feel I've just tried to walk with no chip on my shoulder, you know. I know there's racism out there. I know there's a lot of nonsense out there. All my goals that I said I wanted to achieve, um, I've been hit, I've been, I've, you know, they, some of them have come true, you know. Um, you know, some of them have come true. And I really want to encourage speaking what you want into existence, uh, writing your goals down. And um, yeah, just being persistent in trying to get to those fields. It may not happen overnight, but if you stay on the marathon journey to making it happen, it will happen eventually, hopefully. Um, so hopefully you learned some stuff from my experiences here. Um, so students, I'll just say work hard. You know, I got a 2-1 at University of Westminster. You know, I stayed on the student radio station for three years. Every year I was on the radio. I went to all the conferences. I networked. Got a big voiceover career out of it, you know. Um, got great radio experience out of it. I went on to work, you know, at some of the big national stations. I worked with them all, you know, BBC, Apple, all of the big companies. And now, as I said, I'm currently, my latest job is a BBC television continuity announcer. So I just keep working and, you know, I'm a boy. I didn't come up with no, no privileges, you know. I, I come up single mother, you know, she's done her best, you know to try and raise me on Pipe Fawn Estate in Forest Hill, you know, we had nothing really, you know, so it, I've just come up from, you know, where I've come from in South London and I've just built, 
and I just stay positive and just keep persisting. I love what I do. I'm a nerd for radio and voiceover. And um, yeah, I just continue to try and do that. Enjoy my music, my radio show. And yeah, we just try to keep keep that moving and going.